the solid rock, hymn 406. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Invite you, if you would, to join me as I lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day, and we worship you in, in your majesty and your, your, uh, just your all-consuming power that you have, and your watch care over each and every one of us, each and our here in this uh, worship service, no matter where we gather from this morning. And also, just everybody around the world, Father, we know that you're aware and you're in control. And uh, we just pray for your wisdom and guidance and uh, your healing for those that have fallen ill to the, to the coronavirus. We just lift them up to you and those that are seeking to help those that have been afflicted. Father, I thank you for just for Christ. And I thank you that uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, as Scripture reminds us, and, and that you are the solid rock upon which we can stand, regardless of what's going around in our circumstances and our world today, our finances, our, our uh, jobs, regardless of what's happening, that uh, we can look to you and have faith in you if we but believe and accept Christ. Father, just thank you for your love. Lead us as we uh, continue in worship this morning. As uh, Pastor Rob comes with a message in a while, and just pray for the words that you've uh, laid on his heart out of your your word to share with with the church this morning. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Pastor Rob, just have a couple of announcements. Uh, first off, uh, Megan Bennett will once again be doing a children's story on the church's Facebook page at 10.30. So almost immediately following uh, our service, uh, Megan will once again do the children's story. And then we're going to, on May 6th, uh, we will be uh, holding our business meeting online. Uh, members of the church will uh, be getting a letter with uh, information on, on just how we're going to make that happen. So be looking for that in this coming week. I oftentimes have uh, read out of a book that uh, I received several years ago, and the book's name is Then Sings My Soul. And the song that we're going to sing next is uh, hymn number 338 in our hymnal. It's How Firm a Foundation. And just some history. I'm not going to read the whole story, but just a little bit about uh, this song. Uh, this song was written back in uh, the 1700s, they think, because they really don't know who the author was. It's credited in our hymnal of being from uh, John Rippon. And John Rippon, uh, pastor.
pastor talk about long pastorates, it says here John Rippon pastored the Carters Lane Baptist Church in London for 63 years, uh, beginning in 1775. And he had been born in 1751, uh, so he lived a good long life, and he pastored his whole time. And he was in his mid-20s when he first uh, started in the pulpit there at the Baptist Church in, in, in England. But I'm going to skip quite a bit here, but it says about how firm a foundation, it says the unique power of this hymn is due to the fact that each of the seven original stanzas, we're only going to sing four of them, was based on various biblical promises. The first verse established the hymnist theme. God's word is a sufficient foundation for our faith. The author then selected precious promises from the Bible and converted these into hymn stanzas. Among them are these scriptures. Isaiah 41.10, this sounds familiar from a few weeks back. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right, righteous right hand. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. And the last verse, or the next verse would be 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And the last verse is out of Hebrews 13, 5. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So hopefully you know some of the words to this, this hymn. It's how firm a foundation. I invite you to join me. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Thank you for joining me. I hope you did. Pastor Rob. Have your Bibles this morning. Well, we're going to be in the seventh chapter of Matthew. In the seventh chapter of Matthew, Jesus is teaching and he's uh, gone through several parables. Um, we're going to look at just one of those parables. And that is uh, building on the rock. So Matthew 7, beginning with verse 24 through 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat the house. And it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell. 
and great was its fall. Charles Spurgeon wrote of these verses, Both of the men mentioned in this parable are builders, for to live means to build. Every ambition a man cherishes, every thought he conceives, every word he speaks, and every deed he performs is, as it were, a building block. Gradually, the structure of his life rises. Not all builders are the same. Some are sensible, and some are foolish. So let's take a look. Uh, let's begin with a foundation. Any builder will tell you that the strength of a structure is, depends upon the foundation on which it is built. Now the sensible builder, he built his life on the rock. Jesus Christ is the rock. Uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, For no man can lay any other foundation than what has been laid down. That foundation is Christ Jesus. This foundation is a relationship built on uh, your belief in Jesus Christ. It's not a religion. It is a relationship. And Jesus issues three calls. The building blocks of your life, if you will. The first call, the first building block, is a call to repent and to believe. The second call is to follow Him. That's in discipleship through the Word. And then the third call is to go and make other disciples. So those are the three building blocks for every believer. But notice the foolish built are built on the sand. And the thing about sand, it's always shifting. And I think there are basically two types of uh, sand that Christ is referring to here. The sand of self and the sand of society. So if you've built your house on the sand of self, you're using yourself as a foundation. In reality, you're making yourself your own God. And you'll discover that you develop a situational morality. It's almost like, what, what, what's going to get me what I want? I don't care how, who I have to step on or what I have to do to get what I want. And I think this shifting sand of self, uh, if you remember when the pandemic first began and the, the talk of lockdowns first began, how... Uh, there was this crazy roll uh, run on toilet paper. All, all of a sudden, all the, all the stores in the country were running out of toilet paper. And I recently read about one man who uh, built his life upon himself. He, he bought 10,000 rolls of toilet paper. And his plan was to sell them at exorbitant prices on Amazon. Well, Amazon shut him down, so he couldn't sell them. So then he tried to take them back to the store. And the store wouldn't take them back. So he has now a lifetime supply of toilet paper. Wow. What a testimony to have to come out of a, such a historic pandemic. Then there's that shifting sand of society. You talk about shifting. You're making society your God. And the thing about the shifting sands of society, it's very faddish. Uh, not only in fashion, but just in our morality. When I was a kid, bell bottoms were in fashion. And marijuana was illegal. Just because something's legal doesn't make it right. So it is following, again, using our current pandemic as the example, uh, following society's lead kind of led to uh, the great toilet paper riots of uh, 2020. Um, I read somewhere where these two men actually literally got in a fight over the last couple of rolls of toilet paper at a Walmart, I believe it was in Georgia. What a sad commentary on our society. The second thing I'd like for you to notice about this story is that both 
houses went through a test. Each of those houses looked good and secure when the weather was good. And But if you notice in verses 25 and 27, they use the very same uh, verbiage to describe the test that each house encountered. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. The day of testing had arrived. Then it came to both houses. And notice it wasn't one singular event. If it was just one thing, we all can weather one storm. But it was one thing after another. First the rains came, then the floods came, then the winds blew. And that is, isn't that how life is. Seldom are life storms just singular events. A health storm can impact finances. Strained finances affect relationships and impact those relationships. Currently, our pandemic has caused not only health problems for many, but economic problems for a whole lot more, which has led to many, many personal crises. As with any test, there's always a result. The end of verse 25 describes the result for the sensible man. His house did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. If your life is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, you will weather the storms of life. Paul to the Philippians wrote, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. When you're in a relationship with Christ, He doesn't abandon you in the midst of the storm. He stands up to it and says, Peace, be still. At the end of verse 27, it describes the the result of the foolish man, for the foolish man. His house fell, and great was its fall. If your foundation is the shifting sand of self or society, then your life is not going to be able to weather the storms of life. Life, Your life will become full of trauma, drama, and chaos. And it's those final words that are frightening and great was its fall. To reject Jesus means to look forward after a a life of drama and chaos to being cast into hell where the worm does not die and the fire does not quench. The good news is, it's never too late to build your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And that is our prayer this morning, that if you don't, you haven't built your life on Christ, that you would. And if you feel that you would like to, I invite you to pray this this simple prayer with me. My most holy Heavenly Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I beg Your forgiveness. I confess, Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that He is my Savior. I want to build my life on the foundation of Your Word. I want to come back into a reconciled relationship with You. I thank You for that, and I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. you to follow Pastor Rob in that prayer for the first time this morning or have some questions about walk with Christ and inviting Him to your life, uh, give us a call or uh, reach out to us through the website. Uh, just let us know and somebody who I can touch with you. But as we close this morning, number 261 are wonderful words of life. And that's what Pastor Rob shared this morning was out of God's Word. And they are definitely wonderful words of life. So if you know the hymn, I invite you to stand. Stand right. You can stand if you want to, but I invite you to join me.
as we sing wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Pastor Rob, will you close us this morning? Our most holy Heavenly Father, we pause before your throne of grace, a thankful people. We're thankful that you loved us so much that you sent your Son to redeem us back into a reconciled relationship with you. And as your children, Heavenly Father, your word tells us that we can boldly come before your throne in times of trouble, asking for help and mercy. And that's what we do, Heavenly Father. We, we pray for our country and our communities. Heavenly Father, they're in trouble. We're facing a great health crisis, an economic crisis, Heavenly Father, which has led to so many personal crises. And Heavenly Father, we just, just pray that you guide us in how we might best minister in these times, Heavenly Father. We lift up our, our health care workers, our first responders, our truck drivers, our farmers, Heavenly Father, our politicians, that they would actually lead us. We thank you for this technology that we can still meet, still get into your word, Heavenly Father. We are grateful. Forgive us when we fall short. And yet even at this time, Heavenly Father, give us opportunities to share the hope we have. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you have a great day.